Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. And all the energy it takes to do that means it's energy not put elsewhere, right? So very convenient, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a huge deal. I remember when... Um, do you remember when the Rutgers basketball team took down Don Imus? Um, on Sports Illustrated, it was the same thing. That week, they were a little corner picture. And then, so, I mean, yeah, it, that's a pretty much a pattern. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly right. I mean, this is all about following the money, right? Um, but I, and I think, I, I mean, I think that what we're trying to do, certainly with Spark, is to um, educate and to sort of get a large enough coalition that we're able to push back and in, 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 in redefine and um, sort of uh, say what it is, you know, have young women say what it is that they would really want to buy and what they will buy and what they will not buy and, and so that it becomes not profitable to market in this way. I mean, that's a huge thing. That's a, like a, you know, that's a huge thing to do because we're up against these major corporations and, you know, but, but I think we have to start there. We have to start with um, at demanding. We have to start with um, girl cuts and protesting and, um, Educating, so, right. but it's definitely money driven. We are starting. We hope we're going to start a Spark It Girl. <laughs> we're trying to use this Spark idea, but yeah, we want to start groups on campuses. It's not out yet. We're just plan. It's in the planning stages, but we want to do that. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know who is. You need to have surgery, you need to change your physical, yeah. There are some great organizations nationally, um, and in Maine we have a Boys to Men and a Boys Network, um, you know, and I think those kinds of things are starting to pop up. Um, there are wonderful theorists out there like Michael Kimmel and Bill Pollack and Niobe Way sort of really talking about the emotional lives of boys and how to kind of, you know, support boys. Um, I know there's Men Against Rape, there's, I don't know, Mark, do you have suggestions? Beyond those?
She interviewed boys about their uh, friendships and emotional lives, and ta-da, they have them. <laughs> you know, um, but she really got some amazing, um, you know, sort of interviews and um, was able to do an analysis that, you know. Yeah, they, they have them in early adolescence. They lose them by later adolescence. And they come up against the pressures to be, you know, tough and stoic and uh, strong. And that's where the bodies come in. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely about making money, right? It's definitely about a marketing campaign. And, and again, what marketers are so good at is taking what they think is a kernel of something that could really grab attention. In that case, you know, you know, more positive kind of approach. Although, you know, in terms of corporate responsibility, Dove is owned by Unilever, who also owns Axe, and has some of those highly sexualized commercials out there. And so you have to kind of look a little deeper about, you know, the corporate kind of stuff. But, um, and also there's been lots of debate about, you know, even the diversity of their models that are, and how Photoshop they are, even in their diverse body sizes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think we're never going to be, one of the things that Courtney Martin talks about, was this, you know, I quoted here, and I would highly recommend reading her work on activism. And, and she basically says, you know, the difference now is that we kind of know that we're not going to get a utopia here. We, it's not going to be perfect. So we have to find the things that we can support, and we have to understand that there are some downsides, but it's never always, the purity is, in this corporate world, we're not gonna get a purity. And so that might be as good as we can get, and if we're buying products that we like, even given the parent company, you know, let's, let's try to call the parent company on it, but let's also support the products that we think are giving good messages. So I think, you know, it's a mixed bag. I love this stuff because one thing that one of the young women said was, you know, if I see it from, if I see the transformation to the final image of the woman, I get it. She's out of bed and her hair's a mess and she's got black under her eyes and she's a normal person. If I can see the go through the makeup and the flawlessness and, you know, the airbrushing and the changing her body shape to be beautiful, I understand it and I get it. But I don't see it because all I see is the end product. And so I have to be an end product. You know, I know intellectually what's going on, but I don't see. It. They should show me the whole process. Okay. Well, in Britain, there now, um, there's now a law around photoshopping. That I think you have to sort of say this has been photoshopped in this way, and then people are really pushing for that kind of information to be um, put out with ads that have been highly photoshopped. So I think again, that's another place that we can be more activists around. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're questioning it. I think that girls right now are incredibly media savvy. They know what's going on. So let's take the next step and, and really scaffold activism around this stuff rather than just, I mean, Photoshop is really often where it ends with media literacy with girls. It's like, oh, yeah, this has been Photoshopped. It's like, so? I mean, yeah, I mean, that's important to know, but like, what next? You know, that's what we need to do. So did you have your hand up here? Did, no? You're just stretching. <laughs> um, but someone who hasn't spoken, did Yeah. I mean, my concern with that, with Odd Girl Out, with some of the others, is that they, they really are, um, 
defining the issue as between girls rather than seeing the cultural landscape around it. So that's just my concern. Um, I actually, um, I know Rachel Simmons, who did Odd Girl Out. I think she's really super smart. Her Girls Leadership Institute's fabulous. You know, she's doing a lot of other stuff. And in conversation with her, I mean, she told me how the pressure she got to change up her message, to sell it better. And, you know, I mean, authors also have to, for popular books, you know, I mean, if they're not doing university press books, they also have other kinds of pressures. But um, I really like her work, particularly her work in with girls, not so much the book. <laughs> but um, and Queen Bees and Wannabes, I, I just, you know, I, I was really concerned about the ways that language was used in that book and giving girls a, a more ways to diss each other. So there's you know, alpha girls, beta girls, gamma girls, there's fruit cup girl, there's all this way, in order to sort of make her point, she has a lot of short-term language that, that actually can almost perpetuate the problem. Um, I don't think that's her intent, and I think she's also really very smart. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't wanna, you know, diss them at all, but I think that with those books, we have to really understand the wider culture um, of, girl competition and why it happens. So. Should we stop? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.